We have the student athletes from Virginia, head coach Tony Bennett, SID Eric Bakker. Uh, student athletes with us are Kyle Guy, DeAndre Hunter, Ty Jerome, and Jack Salt. And we will now open the floor for questions. Start here on the front left. Uh, Ty, you committed to Virginia early in your junior year of high school. Kyle committed like six weeks later. When did you meet Kyle for the first time? When did you first play together? And this is for you too, Kyle. And how quickly did you realize that your games complemented each other? Um, yeah, I remember I committed, and then Kyle started following me on all, every social media. I was like, Why is like who is this kid? And then uh, um, I think we started talking over social media. When he told me he was going to commit, and then I think I met him. Was it Mary Klein? Yeah, the first time we played in the All Star game together, um, called Mary Klein Classic. It was in New Jersey, so he stayed in my house for the weekend, and um, we played there for the first time together. We were on the same team, um, and it was it was just fun. And then we went, we uh, also went to the Top 100 camp together too, at Virginia. So, yeah. Kyle. Yeah, I mean, he pretty much nailed it. Um, I definitely bombarded him with a lot of questions and follows on all uh, forms of social media. And then I uh, invited myself to his house for the tournament or for the All-Star game. And then <laughs> uh, we've been friends ever since. So, In the middle, back row. For any of you guys, having played in this arena already this year, how much of an advantage is it for you knowing kind of the shooting background? It's a unique background with the wide sight lines here. How do you guys feel about playing here, having played here already this season? We'll start with Jack and then come down the road towards me. Yeah, I mean, it was good to play here during the season, so kind of got a feel for the environment. Um, so yeah, it's good to have that, that game in our back pocket. Yeah, like he said, um, anytime you can get familiar with an arena is always a, a little bit of a, a benefit, but when the ball's tipped, nothing really matters. Um, yeah, like they said, having experience in this gym uh, definitely helps us a lot. Yeah, they pretty much nailed it. I don't need to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the red shirt here on the third row. Uh, Aaron McFarling with the Roanoke Times. Ty, we know DeAndre's probably not going to talk about himself too much, but you know he's been on the team two years and hasn't had a chance to play in this event. Uh, just can you describe what it's like to have him on your side heading into what you hope will be a long run here? Yeah, um, just a guy that. It might be one of the, might be the most versatile guy in the tournament. Um, can guard one through five almost. Um, can get a bucket when when you when you need one. Isolation, offensive rebound, knock down, catch and shoot shots. So does everything. Um, a guy you want on your team. Um, and just a pretty cool kid off the court too. Front row on the right. Paul Woody, Richmond Times Dispatch uh, for Ty and Kyle. Um, the Gardner Webb coach was saying that he, he's telling his players, have fun, play loose, attack, be confident, enjoy the moment, enjoy the experience. Don't be tight. If you're tight, we have no chance. Are you guys hearing the same thing from Coach Bennett? Is that the attitude you guys are taking into the game? Kyle first and then Ty. Yeah, I would say uh, most teams are probably saying that. You want to play free. You want to have a, a, a sense of joy and fun when you're playing the game, but it's also um, – and it's when you step on the court, it's business time. So there's a, a level of focus that we have to have and uh, preparation today that we're looking forward to. So, uh, For us, it's about doing what we've done to get to this point all year. Uh, we've had a pretty successful year so far. And it's just about um, when we step on the court, playing with that edge that we've had all year. Second row in the middle. Doug Daddy with the run of times. This is for Kyle. The Gardner-Webb coach referred to Ty as the head of the snake. Are you okay with that? 100%. I've been saying that all year. He runs the show, and uh, we just sit back and wait for his passes and then knock him down. So. Huh? Do you try to make him mad? Or? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I thought it was a com is that not a compliment. Is it a compliment? I don't know. I think it is. So. It is. So. <laughs> Third row in the middle. Ty, David Teal with the Daily Press and Newport News. Um, you mentioned the edge with which you guys play. What is the source of that edge? Where does it come from? Um, I think it comes from 
knowing what we want to accomplish, how hard it is to accomplish, what we, how hard it is to do that. Um, last year's defeat, um, and just the desire to be great, and um, yeah, all, all those different things, and try to trying to instill that in every single person on the team. So you know, when you when we get into a tight game or when we get into a, a tournament game like tomorrow, it's not just one or two guys or three guys with that edge. You know, you're playing. 10 different guys that have that same edge. Third row in the middle. Thank you. Uh, Phil Kornblut, Sports Talk Radio Network for Kyle. You can speak for your teammates as well. After what happened a year ago, for those of us who haven't been around you, uh, how have you guys kind of dealt with that history moment and how anxious are you to um, kind of get that off your back and, and get a roll going this year? Yeah, Coach Bennett and the coaching staff did a great job of, you know, making sure that we talked about it after um, when, you know, the next preseason started and stuff. So um, we've become closer as a team, you know. Um, that loss doesn't define us. Um, we watched a TED Talk, and he said something along the lines of, you know, if you use it right, then it can buy you a ticket to a place you couldn't have gone any other way. So um, that's kind of been the motto, and, you know, we know it happened. Losses happen. It's going to happen eventually. Um, you know, just ready for this this year. So, about midway back on the right hand side, Kyle. This is for you again, Nick Carboni with NBC Charlotte. Last week in Charlotte at the ACC tournament, I think you said to the media, "You know, you guys don't have to apologize for asking about last year." I don't know if you meant that or not, but uh, what do do people kind of toe the line with you guys when they see you around campus or in the media when they approach you about last year? And how badly do you guys want them to know that that is behind you? Um, yeah, I mean. I'm not going to speak for anyone else, but you, like I said, you don't have to apologize to me. I'm very transparent, and no one around campus or, or grounds really, you know, mentions it to us or anything. Um, some people don't let it go on social media. I get Venmos all the time saying that they got, I got to pay them $5 because we lost. So, <laughs> um, you know, I don't pay them, by the way. But, um, <laughs> you know, definitely is behind us, and we're ready to, you know, put on a show this year so, you know, we can talk about something else. Back row in the middle. For Ty as well as Kyle, how much does it help having a, a lot of that same group around that, that knows that hurt and that can fuel that going forward into, into this tournament? Ty first and then Kyle. Um, it's definitely helpful, but you got to be careful because you don't want to play with anger. You don't, you don't, I mean, you got to be careful playing with anger, I should say. Um, you know, last year, like Kyle said earlier, we watched the TED talk about it. We, we discussed it a lot. Um, we used it as motivation. Um, and like we said, uh, it can take you to a place, you know, you've never been if you use it the right way. So it's it's more about um, doing what we do, um, playing with our same edge every single game we've played so far this year, um, rather than just knowing we got to make it up for last year and playing with anxiousness and, and anger. Yeah, I would say um, in practice, you know, whenever somebody's tired or, you know, um, you're trying to fight through a rep or you want to take a playoff or something, I always think back to that. Um, and then when I'm on the court, I don't even think about it because I'm focused on what's in front of me. Because if you're, you know, too focused on on the past, then you're not gonna be able to move forward. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's a chip on our shoulder, but it doesn't define us, and we're just trying to move past it and um, let let the inspiration and motivation behind it uh, take us somewhere we haven't been. The back right, real quick, Kyle, Allison Williams, ESPN. Um, screensaver on your phone? Is it still the picture? Yes, yes, ma'am. DeAndre, for you, as you hear these guys talk about last year and knowing you couldn't be on the court for that, just kind of curious your mentality and what emotions it stirs up as you hear them reflecting on last year and look forward to this year. I'm just excited uh, for myself and more for the team uh, just to get back to this stage and have the same opportunity as last year to play against a 16 seed and possibly erase what happened last year. But people are going to still remember, but we have another opportunity to do something really special in this tournament. Front row on the left. This is for Kyle. Kyle, Ty has talked about how much he learned from London the one year they played together. Was there anybody that first year of the older guys who was a mentor to you? Yeah, I would say London also. He was my uh, roommate on the roads, so I learned a lot from him. But um, to be honest, I learned so much from all these guys every day. Even freshman year, I was learning a lot from Ty and his mindset and the way he plays the game. And um, so, yeah. Front row. Paul Woody, uh, Richmond Times Dispatch again, Ty and Kyle. This TED Talk you're referring to, was this specifically about your situation or was it about 
handling an adversity and and using it to your advantage in the future. And who made the TED talk? No. Either whoever has that answer. No, they didn't make a TED talk just for us. <laughs> um, <laughs> they. <laughs> it was. Um, who, who His name was the storyteller. Yeah, it was the um, storyteller, oh, okay. um, and it was just about. It actually had nothing to do with basketball. The TED talk. It was um, a story he told about um, his experience, his life experiences, which weren't basketball related, but most of the times you can relate um, almost anything to your passion. So. Second row in the aisle. Yeah, this is for Kyle again. Could you talk about Braxton Keys? contributions this year yeah I would uh, I would go as far to say that he's one of the better rebounders on the team um, I, I think he leads the team in rebounding um, on limited minutes and he's gained a lot of trust from from the players and the, the coaching staff in these last few games he's coming around um, uh, during the right time um, as we move forward in March so um, his versatility has been been great and um, he's improved every day Third row on the left. This one got to be for Jack. <laughs> <laughs> DeAndre, I'm, I'm curious. <laughs> as you're watching the TED talk and, and, and even going back to just watching the game itself, um, what was that experience like for you? And, and um, how many times have you, have you run over what you could have contributed had you been there? Um, I feel like in the moment I wasn't really thinking about it because I wasn't playing. Uh, but a few days after, I just thought about how I wouldn't be able to play with those guys again, uh, play with that team again. And, I mean, it kind of hurt, but, um, I mean, I don't really think about what I could have contributed to the game because, I mean, it doesn't matter. I didn't play, so just try to move on. On the right-hand side. Uh, this one's for Ty Nick Carboni from NBC Charlotte. <laughs> Sorry, Jack. <laughs> well, specifically for you, Ty, Jose Perez on Gardner Webb says he knows you a little bit from some AAU experience. Can you talk about him a little bit and how you know him and just what Gardner Webb, what jumps out on film about them? Yeah, so we actually played in the same AAU program, uh, PSA Cardinals in New York, and I played him against him um, our high schools twice, I think. Um, so I heard he's having a, a great year. Uh, I think he leads them in rebounds. Um, he posts a lot from the four position. He's been that versatile four for them. Um, passes the ball well from out of the post. Um, so I heard he's having a great year. Um, I think their versatility jumps out on film. Um, one through five, shoot, shoot to three. Um, they're a little smaller, but they all, they all attack. Um, they're balanced. Um, they have some really good athletes. They defend. They share the ball. They don't turn it over much. Um, so they're, they're a real good team. It's going to be a, a, a battle. Jack, do you want to elaborate on the, uh, anything that jumps out about Gardner Webb? <laughs> sure. Um, no, like Ty was saying, they're very versatile. They're five men, can shoot the three, um, face up, and relentless. Um, so it's going to be a good, good matchup. We're excited to play tomorrow. Fourth throw in the middle. Uh, this can go to any of you guys, really. But I guess as it relates to a year ago, you have new pieces that you didn't have then, DeAndre being one, Braxton being another, Kihei being another. How much more equipped do you guys feel to play small ball this year than maybe you were defensively a year ago? We'll start with Kyle. And this will be the final question, so we'll start with Kyle and let anyone else answer. Yeah, I would say that, you know, on the ball, Kihei brings something to the game that I've never played with or experienced. Um, and I'm not sure that um, full court wise, Coach Mann's ever seen anything like this in his program. So um, he will be a, a key piece moving forward. And then, like I said, Braxton um, being able to rebound is huge. Obviously, we know what Dre brings to the table is just a little bit of everything. So, um, you know, whenever you're not playing with someone like that, your team's going to struggle a little bit. We got him healthy and back and ready to go. And, um, you know, with Braxton and Kihei. I'm just excited for them to, you know, play with this team in the tournament for the first time. So, anyone else want to add to that? Thank you, guys.
Virginia head coach Tony Bennett. Coach, if you start with an opening statement, and we'll open the floor for questions. Sure. Um, yeah, obviously excited to be back here and getting ready to play. I heard the tail end of, of our guys' um, responses, and I'm sure you guys got a lot of questions for me, so I'll, I'll look forward to answering them. But um, again, thankful to be in this spot. Um, and we know how good, I'm sure you asked me, Gardner-Webb is. And we're trying to prepare as well as we can and, and look forward to playing tomorrow. First question here, uh, second row in the middle. Tony, you don't always get a chance to see your incoming recruits play together before they get to college. Were you confident that Ty and Kyle would complement each other as well on the court as they have? Yeah, they're, they're smart, skilled players. And, you know, they got to play in the uh, NBA Top 100 camp. I think they played, they might have been on the same team or they, they played in that. And just watching them, hey, you guys that have feel for the game and are skilled and smart um, usually, you know, gel or mesh together. Uh, and they've done that. And, you know, I think they've come in and they've added to their uh, physical. Uh, Coach Curtis has done a great job. They've gotten stronger and more athletic. But um, again, the way they play the ball and, and the way they are was, you know, can we get them ready defensively? And they've even taken steps in that area. So no question, they've, uh, they have that. Midway back on the right-hand side. Tony Carboni from NBC Charlotte. Some of your players describe Gardner-Webb's style as relentless and balanced. What jumps out to you? Yeah, I'm, I'm impressed. Um, well coached, uh, Tim does a great job, but you know, teams that have fours and fives that can, well, all the players that can shoot the three, uh, multiple actions, great spacing of the floor, very good numbers offensively and defensively, uh, just they're, they're good. I, you know, they beat two ACC opponents on the road um, and uh, one of the ACC assistants just called me and said, they're very good. You've got to be ready because they can play. And, of course, we're going to be ready. We understand that. When you get into this tournament, everybody can play. So I think just their, their balance, their ability to stretch the floor, the, the actions that they run. And then, um, again, it's, you know, what DJ did in the championship game um, was amazing. But they have multiple um, players to attack and score and play that way. Back right corner. Tony, hi. Uh, David DeGuzman, WFXR in Roanoke. Uh, I wanted to ask you about Richie McKay, uh, your former assistant, obviously Liberty, in the tournament for the first time since 2013. What stood out to you about your time with him as an assistant and how impressed are you with how he's been able to turn around the program to get to the NCAA tournament? Yeah, well, he did a great job when he was there the first time. And uh, Richie was such a, a blessing for me to come in. You know, he was a friend from way back, uh, head coaching experience. And have a, you know, I think he had been in um, the Virginia area for I don't know how many years exactly when I took the job, but um, excellent recruiter, uh, understands the game, uh, high level offensively, great mind, and um, just who he is. You know, you, you have to, when you go through these <laughs> rebuilding programs or the, the rigors of just seasons, you want people that uh, you always say are, are with you irregardless and you trust them and, and that that was built in because of our relationship before because of who he is um, and then I you know hopefully he helped our program hopefully he gained some things but he's taken that that job and he's got very good players they play a sound system they are defending well um, he's got them doing good stuff offensively so I'm really happy to see the success that he had and, and coach Susie's there uh, who was with us as well Middle uh, coach. Coach Joe Wayne, that's with the Richmond Times Dispatch. Um, over the course of the season, how do you make sure the guys are sort of mentally where they need to be uh, at this point of the year? Can, can it feel, the regular season kind of feel long at times? And if so, how do you make sure that this time of the year they're kind of at their best uh, going into tournament play? Yeah, that's, you're always trying to, you know, the teams that can um, advance are the teams that are healthy, that are playing their best basketball and are fresh. Um, the season is, is challenging, it's long, so, you know, you, you always look at the season and say, how can we try to peak at the right time, play our best basketball? And when you're in a league like the ACC, um, we always use the term, it'll check you for leaks. <laughs> if you got any leaks, it'll show up. So you just have to be ready every time out. And um, you know, you're hopeful that that competition, if there's something that's off, it'll show, and then you address it to work at it. And then again, just prepare the right way. That, that's all you can do. You know, I, I told our guys, um, you know, they're going to get so many questions, I'm sure, about last year. And um, I said, here's the deal. I said, you, you respect your opponent, which is easy to do because they're, they're very good. You respect the game. You prepare well and then get yourself in the moment 
and go out and play. That's, that's what you can control. And again, you try to get your team playing the best basketball, but um, that's the reality of it. So, you know, hopefully we're in a good spot and ready to play. Coach, back row in the middle. Will Pelagic, South Carolina Radio Network. Tony, uh, dovetailing off of that, your players talked about channeling last year's disappointment properly. What constitutes during that, and how do you prepare them just having dealt with that for this stage now? Yeah, you know, that's everybody processes things or internalizes things differently. Um, but, you know, in, in all of your experiences, when you go through um, a relatively hard thing, those are the things that can really shape you, as we always talk about, if you learn to use them right. So that was something that we, you know, we've talked about as a team and certainly have, have dealt with it and we've said we've owned that. And, um, and I think that's, you know, just use it in the right way. You don't stay in it forever, but you grow from all those things, but especially that, and then attack this year. Uh, we talked about running to the starting line. You know, that was kind of a theme we talked about to, to this year and playing in the best way. And certainly there's motivation from all the experiences that have happened in the past. But uh, I, I think it's, it's the ability, as I said, to prepare well and uh, be in the moment now and um, be as good as you can and know you're going to be. Uh, it's, it's a new year, and it's kind of that idea of pressing on, pressing on. Coach, front row. Uh, uh, Paul Woody, Russian Times Dispatch. Uh, Coach Bennett. Um, the players were talking about a TED Talk that they, they watched. Um, they, uh, do you, was that your idea? And do you re remember who the, gave the talk and what the point of the whole exercise was? Yeah, it, it was, if you've ever watched TED Talks, they're, they're very, uh, I think they're inspirational. This was one just, um, actually it was done in Charlottesville, a guy named, uh, well, it was called Joe the Storyteller. And it was just, uh, he had gone through or had, had witnessed uh, something, a, a hard thing. This was after, at the start of the year we showed it. And it was, uh, it was just, it was powerful. It was a unique, I thought, TED Talk that really spoke to the situation at hand. And, and it's really just, there's so many things guys take from it, but the ability to learn to use um, things that happen in your life in the right way, because um, there's just a quote, and I think I shared it at ACC Media Day, that if you learn to use it right, it can buy you a ticket to a place uh, that you couldn't have gone any other way, you know, talking about a hard experience. And, and that was kind of the idea about that. And, um, you know, I, that's, that's the reality of, of uh, the talk and the guys. And, you know, we've, we've used that and shared that and say, in anything, what can we learn from this? Are we thankful for what we learn, whether it's a tough loss, a great win, or a situation like last year, um, the ability to, to grow from that and respond in the right way? Coach, third row in the middle. Coach, Wes McElroy, Sports Radio 910, the fan of Richmond. You can show guys and you can talk to them about certain things, but what most impressed you, the message that you gave them last year after that loss and the things that you told them in the offseason, what's most impressed your – most caught your attention, impressed you during the regular season about the growth and maturity of this team? Yeah, you know, you just um, – as I said, the league is good. You just – you got to step in the moment and play. And I thought the guy's consistency, you know, that – a conference season or a season is is about the consistency of your team on the road at home over two and a half months or you know 18 games in the ACC and that's a challenge now that's a different kind of challenge than the NCAA tournament the NCAA tournament or ACC is the one and done but I, I marvel that how they they found ways they rallied and they were at a very consistent level for the most part and that doesn't always happen um, when you're in a league any league really because um, usually there's a, some drop-offs or dips, and, and certainly that's possible. But how they did that, you know, what was our record in conference? We were six, what were we? 16 and two, right? <laughs> yes, okay, going back. Um, to be able to do that um, over that consistent time, that, that impressed me. And they, they really, you know, played together. I think their versatility was important, but, um, and they all improved in the off season. So I think that, that always stands out to me that uh, over that course of time, that, I think that's kind of what you're asking, where I, I step back and say, hard to do, and they did it, and, and well done. In the back right. Hey, Tony. Allison Williams, hey, Allison. Um Curious if you could just speak to the impact of having DeAndre this year in the mm -hmm. tournament, his versatility and what he brings, and the difference it will be having him. Yeah, I th yeah, DeAndre has had a heck of a year. He's improved. You said it, his versatility, you know, defensively, we've used him at times to guard ones, twos, threes, and fours. Um, 
and that that can be helpful. You know, you you have to the way the game is going with you know fours and fives now that are playing just like guards and separating. You need mobility and quickness to be able to hopefully guard guys like that well. And then you know, offensively, we've used DeAndre on the some on the perimeter and some as kind of a stretch four, and he's been able at times to certainly manufacture some shots, shot making ability. Those things I think are really important and you have to account for him on the offensive end and you know, he can score in the post some. He's just versatile really in both both ways. So and you know at six seven or six eight with the long wingspan, just his dimensions are good. So just a, a high quality player obviously and I think that um, anytime you can have a versatile player that can play some four, four year or three, that makes a I think that is what was uh, helped us last year and has, has helped us again this year among other things. Coach, second row on the right. Ron Counts from Daily Progress. Coach, uh, Jack talked about last year as a guy who can score on the outside and on the inside. Whether it's Jack defending him or someone else, what's the key to defending a versatile big like that? Uh, say that. What was the first part? Uh, Jack. Jack mentioned Lasseter as a guy who can score oh, on Lassiter, the perimeter. Right. Yeah, I yeah. said last year. I said last year. Yes. <laughs> he can score on the perimeter and the paint. What's yeah. the key to defending a versatile He's, big like that? You have to be really good individually on him, and then collectively as a team. It can't be one man just stopping him because what he, you know what he did in the the tournament and and all. He's playing his best basketball now. But it's not just him. You say, okay, well, we can just lock into him. They have so many other quality players that can score and they're efficient. But um, you have to, they do a lot of good stuff with ball screens. You got to be, be able to stop the ball and quick to him as a shooter and then be able to spread out. And because um, he, he drives well. And again, inside, outside, I think he's shooting in over 40 from three. Uh, their team's shooting almost 40%. So. Uh, it puts pressure and a challenge on you, but very alert and very ready and, and quick to him because of his ability to play outside and inside as their five a lot of times. Coach, back right corner. Hey, Tony, Dan Walken, USA Today. Um, yeah. I've seen you after some tough losses. You seem to have this incredible calm about you in those tough, in the toughest moments probably of your career. Is that a conscious choice for you to 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 act that way, to comport yourself that way, or is that just something that, that comes naturally to you? And when you're ever in private, do you ever go somewhere and scream or something <laughs> like that? Punch the pillow. I used, to, I used to do that when I played for my dad. When he'd yell at me, I'd like go to the dorm and we'd say, all right, this is a pillow, and we'd say, pretend as he's chewed us out. So, of course you do. Um, I'm, I've been, um, I'm thankful for the things. That you certainly feel things, things bother you, but where does peace and perspective come from? And I always tell our guys, um, it's, it's got to be something that is unconditional. And I know I have that in the love of my family. Um, unconditional acceptance and love, that's huge. And I know I have that in my faith in Christ. That's for me where I draw my strength from, my, my peace, my steadiness in the midst of things. Um, but of course you feel things. Of course you, you desperately want things to go well and it's frustrating when you're not. And, and you step back and look at it. But I think I always challenge our guys, what's your secret of contentment? What's your secret of contentment? Because there's going to be times it talks about you're going to be well fed and living in plenty, and there's going to be times where you're going to be starving and living in want. Um, what's your secret of handling that? And that I know without a doubt, those of us who have parents or kids that, that love you, give them unconditionally, or if, if the, your faith is there, that has to buoy you, and that has to be your center. And you dwell on what is good because there is a bigger picture to all this, and I, I believe I understand that. So, you know, going through those refining moments, whew, they're tough, but you look back at them in a way they're sometimes painful gifts that draw you nearer to what, what truly matters. And I think that's, that would be the best way I could respond to that. We're out of time, uh, so we have to end. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.